Hi, Les from Thailand here. And today's story is going to be about when things go really, really wrong in Thailand. Now the story is, is quite a few years old, but it happened to a friend of mine. Again, all the stories that I tell you are true because it's from the people that I know. I haven't heard it off anybody else to pass on to somebody else like Chinese whispers. And this is a genuine story because it happened to my friend and it was sad actually to see. But this story started in 2007 and my friend uh, used to live in England and he was like a bit of a property developer in, in England and he had quite a few houses and I did various electrical work for him. So I'd known him for a few years before this story actually happened in Thailand, 2007. So he used to spend his time between Thailand and England and he was telling me about he was building this great big five bedroomed house over in Thailand just on the outskirts of Pattaya and he asked me whether I'd actually come over and do him a, a CCTV system and burger alarm system and he offered to pay me flight and a week's accommodation well for me I just looked upon it as oh, it's a free week in Thailand yeah I'll, I'll have a bit of that so in 2007 he paid for my flight and my accommodation for a week, although I stayed for two weeks in Thailand, he'd, he'd give me a week's free accommodation while I was working at his house, putting a burger alarm system in and a, a CCTV system into his house. Now, it was a big five bedroomed detached house with a really big swimming pool and an all ornamental pool. It was beautiful. It had its own gymnasium and what he was doing, he bought the land surrounding his house as well, so he was never ever going to be overlooked. He was overlooking pineapple fields, and it was beautiful views. So he bought all the land around his house, and what he was going to do, he was going to build a gated community. So he was selling three bedroom detached houses with, with their own swimming pool, with nice views, again, all overlooking the pineapple fields, and he was selling them for £100,000 each with the intention of making his houses the biggest house in this community and all the other houses were going to be three bedroom detached houses with their own swimming pool with nice views and he's going to have security guard, a gated community and each house that he was selling with in 2007 was worked out at £100,000 for each property which was a lot for Thailand. But he showed me around the house and the quality of the fittings was, was beautiful and everything was done top notch, it really, really was. And it is five bedroomed house that he had, had a, a massive veranda overlooking these pineapple fields and he had a drop down TV, just pressed a button and down the TV, oh, it, was, it was like superb. It was like everybody's dream to, to live somewhere like this it was a fantastic house now how we paid for all of these developments in thailand was that because of the value of his houses in england kept going up so he kept borrowing against the valuation of the properties in england to maintain the the buying the land and the building quality of these houses over here in thailand and obviously people give him money up to a hundred thousand pounds each to build this three bedroom detached house and majority of the people were the people that he knew uh, from working as contractors and one thing and another. 15 houses altogether was going to be built around his house and make it as quite a sizeable um, gated community and none of the houses were overlooked and they were all pleasant. It, it was really a nice set out that he had. So having a few beers with him talking about it and it's just like wow you know brilliant absolutely superb really really nice um he said if everything goes right les in a year's time i'll have a million pounds in the bank i said well i hope everything goes for you well we're a beautiful location to live here and as i say it was in 10 15 minutes drive of patia so I put the CCTV system in for him and I put the burger alarm system in for him and the week soon passed. And we had a few beers and he was describing how life was wonderful. And, and then that was it. I, two weeks was over and I went back to England. And then a year later, 2008, I had a two week holiday in Pattaya and um, I gave my friend a call and asked to see how things were going. 
and it was at that time he started saying oh well, things have started going a little bit pear-shaped now he said i'm stuck he said i borrowed some money off my sister to carry on the building of, of the houses because the house value is stagnant or even dropping so he said i can't borrow any more money off my houses to help fund the building of these houses here so and he'd already committed to buying some extra land because he was going to extend the development as well so he sort of got over committed and then what happened with that is that he had a massive argument with the bank manager over in England because they wouldn't fund him any more money and he needed to pay various people over here in Thailand so he was struggling for money so he borrowed a large sum of money off his sister saying that he would give it back in two or three months doing a whatever deal he was going to do and the deal went bad and then during all of this bad times for him he found out that his girlfriend had been stealing money off him every month he found that his site manager who he's been friends with for 10 years had been ripping him off for money um, to the tune of £10,000 a year even though he was getting paid a salary to oversee all the works and that whilst my friend was back in England he found that out by mistake because once he found out his, his girlfriend had been cheating him out of money he had a massive argument and he told her to go but his girlfriend used to do the accounts for him as well so now he needed an accountant so he hired a professional account, accountant to come and look at the books well, when she came and looked at the books and she found out that there was big discrepancies as far as the money's concerned, she said, oh, that there's something like 100,000 bahts worth of uh, receipts missing. So he had a word with his friend who used to be the, the site manager and used to oversee everything, um, another English friend it was. And he said, oh, don't worry. He said, I'll get the, the wife to make up some invoices. So first of all, my friend thought, oh yeah, okay, okay, that's the way it goes, no problem. And then he got sat thinking, I'll get my wife to make some invoices up. So then he asked his accountant to look further into this um, situation and she found out a lot of these invoices had already been made up as well. So therefore, that's when they found out that he'd been skimming some of the money off like £10,000 per year as well as being paid a good salary for being the site manager and overseeing everything. So really, at that time, 2008, everything was going against him. He'd lost the £85,000 that he borrowed from his sister on a deal that went wrong. His girlfriend had been stealing money from him. His site supervisor, manager, he'd been stealing money from him. The bank manager over in England wouldn't give him any more money. So he had a big argument threatening the bank manager that when he came home to England he was going to sort them out because he was really, really hard pressed for money over here. So he was going back to England to try and sort it out with the bank with regard to being able to get a bridging loan or borrow some more money because he was in a desperate situation over here in Thailand. He'd been over committed. So when he landed at Heathrow Airport he was met by the police because he threatened the bank manager, the bank manager had called the police. Then as soon as his name flagged up on the immigration as he re-entered the country, he was arrested by the police for threatening a bank manager. So he spent some time in a, in a holding cell whilst he got interviewed and he, he explained the situation and he got off with a caution for using threatening behaviour. Now once in England, he borrowed some more money off, off friends and family with regard to he said, once I get another four or five houses sold, he said, I'll be able to send the money back to everybody. So he was fighting against a, a losing battle at that stage in 2008. So he borrowed more money off his friends and family, came back to Thailand, completed the houses, thinking that I'll sell these easily. And because of the financial situation everywhere in the world, 2008, the financial crash, Nobody was buying, so he'd been really, really overcommitted. And what he did, silliness, he borrowed money from a Thai money lender. And he borrowed a lot of money from a Thai money lender here in Thailand, thinking next week 
he's going to sell a house or the week after he's going to sell a house. So these money lenders knocking on the door, using and threatening behaviour to say, we want the money, we want the money. So, unfortunately, he got into drugs. He started taking yabba and taking yabba it's the downward slippery slope of drug taking and he took yabba just to calm his mind down from overthinking thinking at first he said i just need something to calm me down i'm just over worrying about everything there's got to be a solution there's got to be a way of solving all of these problems but within another month his problems had got even worse because of the money lenders coming around all the time and he because he was threatened by the money lenders he had a firearm an illegal firearm and he shot him over the heads of these money lenders to scare them off but because the money lenders and the villagers that were near heard the, the firing of his weapon they called the police the police came and there was big arguments and shouting at the property because he didn't want the police there and the village was saying he's gone crazy so the police came in big numbers there was 10 of them when they entered his house he was shouting and screaming and uncontrollable because he'd been taken yabber as well because of more stress and he got arrested and he got put into a, a mental institution in thailand and he was just going crazy because he was hooked on yabber so his family were concerned about him and they, all they wanted to do was get him back home to England. So they, they contacted the, the Thai police and the embassy. And the only way they'd let him out of the mental institution from Thailand is that if they would get a, a letter from a, an institute, a mental institution in England to say that he would be allowed to go to a mental home in England to get sorted out. So they arranged that, they got it all sorted out and he was shipped off to England into a, a mental institution where he was being treated for addiction to drugs. Now because everything had gone wrong and he owed money to everybody, he had no way of paying the money back. He had no way of paying the money from his house. He couldn't sell the house because it, to it wasn't totally finished. So my friend was deported from Thailand and banned from returning to Thailand for 10 years because he'd, he'd been dealing in drugs and also he discharged a firearm. So he was banned from returning to Thailand for a 10 year period. And as I say, he was only released out of the mental institution of Thailand as long as he was gonna be put into a mental institution to get treated in England, which he was. So he was in the mental institution for a couple of months before he was released in England and sadly because of the yabba that he'd been consuming in England it sort of turned his mind a little bit and I seen him two years ago so it's 2021 now so I've seen him 2019 and uh, he was a very very switched on guy but now he isn't he was saying to me he talks with God every day he's living in a tent in the woods and he drives around on a little scooter um, his family take over his financial responsibilities with regard to some of the properties that he's got left. He had some that was repossessed off him because he didn't pay the mortgages and one thing and another. In 2007 when he said, said to me, Les, in a year's time I'll have a million pound in the bank. So now in 2021 he's living in the tent in the woods and his family are taking care of any money financial situation he's got with the houses that he's got he gets an income off his family every month and they're taking a little bit of the rental income from his houses to repay the massive debts he had and i don't know exactly what's happened to the houses but friends that know him and um, there was 10 houses that were already complete the money lender took one of them because he had the chinot on one of them as far as guarantee for lending and the money's concerned. Other people moved into the other houses that his friends abandoned because the upkeep of the properties and the surrounding gardens and areas wasn't done so therefore um, squatters squatted in the houses 
and some squatters were living in his five bedroom detached house. So the place has sort of gone derelict now. The solicitor is trying to fight to try and sell these properties, but in Thailand, that's not gonna happen. So basically, he's lost everything that he ever stood for here in Thailand. So a cautionary tale about anybody investing or overstretching themselves with investments here in Thailand. It can all go wrong and it might not be your fault. My friend's fault was because of the financial crash in 2008. So he couldn't borrow the money on the properties that he had because up till then, property prices have been going up every year so you could borrow money no problem so a cautionary tale from les living the dream in thailand until the next video bye for now